One in three COVID survivors were diagnosed with a brain or psychiatric disorder within six months. That suggests the pandemic could lead to a wave of mental and neurological problems. Those results come from a study out of Oxford University. Researchers who conducted the analysis said it was not clear how the virus was linked to psychiatric conditions such as anxiety and depression, but these were the most common diagnoses among the 14 disorders they looked at. Joining me on The Morning Show is Dr. Jessica, the busy mind psychologist. Hey, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Doing great. So the researchers say the most common diagnoses were, as I said, anxiety and depression, but the frustrating thing is they aren't exactly sure how the virus is linked to the problems. Yeah, it can be really difficult, especially at the beginning when we're still learning so much about the after effects of someone who's experienced COVID to understand what that link is. But the fact that people are experiencing higher rates of anxiety and depression is something that we shouldn't be alarmed about, but we should be looking at and, and learning from. So then I've heard about COVID brain fog. I know of people, they're like, I, I just was told I did something, but I don't remember what happened. That's a reality. It is a reality. It can be a reality while you're going through COVID and sometimes that people have some lingering effects. On top of that, if you're experiencing anxiety or stress, it's very common to have difficulties with remembering or trouble concentrating that can kind of mimic or feel like brain fog. And you're hearing that uh, people are having flashbacks and, and nightmares, kind of like a, a COVID PTSD? It's very common. If we think about if you've been hospitalized, that can be a very scary experience. If you're worried that you might die, that's a traumatic event. And so some people are experiencing normal trauma experiences as a result of that. And let's not forget about the psychological trauma of not being able to connect with loved ones, losing loved ones and not being there with them or having to do a Zoom funeral. That goes beyond the physical effect of coronavirus. Can this be long lasting? It, it definitely can. What we want to highlight and focus on is the fact that we do have ways to connect with our loved ones, even if we can't give them that big, wonderful hug in person, and making sure in the months following that we have the opportunity to reach out and connect with the people who really matter to us. Hey, look, the bottom line is we are all trying to return to normal. What is your best advice on getting back to, uh, I'll call it emotional normal? Yeah, the most important thing is staying focused on what is within your control. A lot of us are jumping forward and thinking about all the things that might happen, but we don't have any control over that. All we can do is focus on taking care of ourselves and our loved ones right here, right now, and taking it one day at a time. So don't worry about the things that you can't control. Absolutely. All it does is stress us out, and we can't actually do anything about it until it comes up. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Yeah, if people want to get in touch with me, they can reach out through Instagram at BusyMindPsychologist or go to BusyMindPsychologist.com. All right. Hey, great talking to you. And I'm sure we've uh, given some great advice to a lot of people. Thanks for your time because you're out there so on much. the left coast where it's what, like 446 in the morning. So It is. It is. Calls. Bright and early. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day.